<laughs> Hello again, bug-sized friend! Have you ever wondered what it's like to fight the deadliest spiders in the world? No? Well, let's find out. Challenger 1. Black Widows. Despite their size at a cute 1.5 inches, the Black Widow is one of the deadliest spiders in the world. Drop the drop, its venom is more potent than most rattlesnakes. But in a fight, you do have one advantage. Widows have really poor eyesight, so your best bet is to sneak attack it. But first you'll have to navigate its messy maze of tangle webs, and some strands are laced with sticky glue droplets. Just grazing against one is a death sentence. But what looks like a random mess of silk to us is actually an intricate network. And disturbing a strand in this network sends vibrations back down to where the widow rests, alerting her to your presence. It's kinda like those laser trip wire rooms you see in spy movies. You could try cutting yourself out, but widow silk is tougher than Kevlar. And more wriggling means you get more tangled. Which creates even more vibrations. And as soon as she senses you, she bolts towards you. She bites using her fangs, injecting venom straight into your veins, and it paralyzes you instantly. Most spiders feed in a similar way, first squirting digestive enzymes to liquefy your internal tissues, and then slurping up that sweet, sweet nutrient soup. Leaving behind a shriveled husk. Just like how she cannibalized her husband! Thankfully, Black Widow bites are rarely fatal for most non-bug-sized humans, but you might end up with symptoms like muscle pain and cramps. Some other spiders on this list aren't so nice, though. Into the collection you go! Challenger 2 Trapdoor Spiders Trapdoor spiders are devious hunters that can span up to 3 inches long. And as their name suggests, they create trapdoors using silk, soil, and leaves. And they're so well constructed that they camouflage perfectly with the ground. The trapdoors are rigged with silk tripwire, so as soon as you bump into one... The spider bursts out, grabs you, and pulls you inside in a blink. It's adapted to be super efficient at this, with strong spiny front legs to grapple prey and powerful fangs for piercing and crushing. And in case you try to resist, some trapdoor species even have armored carapaces for additional defense. In my opinion, it's a high-risk, high-reward hunting strategy though. Like, what if a predator triggers the tripwire instead? There's another species called the Ravine Trapdoor Spider, and it kinda looks like the devs forgot to hit Extrude on its butt. But the flat butt actually makes a tough shield. Kinda looks like an Oreo. <laughs> so in the off chance that you manage to dodge the spider's first attack, it can retreat and plug its burrow with its shield butt. Before we fight the seven other unique spiders on this list, let's go through some spider lore first. What makes a spider a spider? Is it the eight legs? Well, this dude has eight legs. No, oh, who's a good spider? Well, not you. If you want to be a spider, you need to have two body segments, eight legs, silk-spinning butt factories called spinnerets, and venomous chelicerae, a fancy word for fang bits. A spider's life cycle has three main stages. First is the egg stage. Female spiders lay hundreds of eggs in silk sacs. Some species stick them to their webs and guard them till they hatch, while others, like wolf spiders, carry them on their butts. Second, we have the spiderling stage. The eggs typically hatch in a few weeks, and the spiderlings that pop out are usually a mini replica of their adult versions. For most species, the spiderlings are left to fend for themselves, but the wolf spider is a rare case and carries them all on her back. As a spiderling, all you need to do is find food and survive, but your hundreds of brothers and sisters all need food too. And right now, you're looking like a yummy snack. To escape from cannibalism, the spiderlings run away. If they can, or some use a special ability called ballooning, where they release silk threads into the air and peace out on a silk parachute. I'm free! Another big part of this stage is molting. Because spiders have an exoskeleton, in order to grow they need to constantly shed their skin to provide themselves with more room to get bigger. Can we 
appreciate how difficult it would be to pull all eight of your legs out of your exoskeleton? Like, I can't even get out of my two-legged pants without- After roughly five to ten molts, depending on the species, the spiderling finally moves on to the adult stage. Now the spider is at its full size, and this is usually when their colorful markings are most prominent. If you're a male spider, for most species, it's pretty much a wrap for you at this point. You're at risk because you have to wander out of your nest to find a mate. <laughs> Or if you do manage to find a mate, she'll probably eat you. Or even if none of these things happen to you, you'll probably just drop dead right after anyway. Because biology. If you're a female spider, you can have a much more fulfilling adult life. You're often way bigger and scarier, and you usually live much longer too, producing multiple egg sacs over your lifetime. And then the process repeats. Aw, you itching to get back into it, little guy? No, no, I'm not. Challenger 3. Ogre-faced netcasters. The ogre-faced netcaster is a spider that gets its name from its big eyes and tiny head. It spans about three inches long, and their huge eyes give them really good night vision. Even better than an owl. There is a catch though. They can't control the amount of light exposure into their eyes. Humans have irises for this purpose, but the eyes of Ogre Face over here are just one giant pupil. So every morning they get burnt to a crisp, and then the spider regrows its light sensitive cells again by nighttime. This happens every day, by the way. So your best bet is to defeat them during the day when they're completely blind. That is, if you can find them. They're excellent camouflages, with their bodies resembling bark and dried leaves. Too late, it's nighttime now. And Ogre Face here has come out to hunt. It first weaves a rectangular web of silk, and then stretches it to three times its size between its forelimbs like a net. Then of course, it takes a dump on the ground. And then they wait motionless above. This leads to some of the coolest looking spider photos I have ever seen. Like, look at him! And look at his little Squidward face! Oh, and the poop is speculated to either be a target or something stinky to lure prey. As soon as you sniff that delicious poo and get close, it strikes, lunging down and dropping its web net, ensnaring you immediately. It wraps you up a bit more just to make sure you're nice and comfy, and then it digs in. Challenger 4. Diving Bell Spiders. The Diving Bell Spider is quite tiny, spanning only 0.8 inches, and it's the only known spider to basically live its whole life underwater. It can freely move in water for short periods using air trapped on small hydrophobic hairs on its body. But to stay underwater for longer, it builds something called a diving bell. It first creates a waterproof web sack, and then inflates it using air trapped on its body. This usually takes the spider several trips up to the surface to accomplish. But once it's fully inflated, it serves as the spider's new base of operations. And it usually only leaves to refill the air bubble or to hunt. Its diet consists of aquatic bugs, tiny crustaceans, and sometimes even small fish. And it hunts by detecting the vibrations of prey in the water. Blech. But it can't really eat you in the water because the digestive enzymes it squirts out would just get diluted. So instead, it drags you back to its little spider bubble where it can chow you down in peace. Challenger 5 Giant Antarctic Sea Spiders the giant Antarctic sea spider lives underwater along the coasts of Antarctica, and they can grow up to 30 inches long! That's like the size of a small dog! I don't know how I feel about this anymore. It's not exactly known why they get so big, but there's a couple of theories. One is that Antarctic water is very oxygen rich, and the extra availability helps them grow better. Also, bigger bodies can store more energy in food-scarce environments, and can also deal with the crushing pressure of the ocean better. But despite having spider in their name, they're not spiders. They belong to a group called Pycnogonids, which is kinda like a distant cousin to spiders. So, close enough for me. They're so weird though. They have no lungs or gills, and instead breathe through their super long legs. 
Plus, their body is so small that they don't have enough space to store everything in there. So, they keep some vital organs in their legs too. Uh, not really sure what you can do about this guy. Maybe you could crawl into its leg and block its breathing pipes or something. <laughs> but it's got a bunch more of them though. These sea spiders feed super slowly using their long tubular proboscis to pierce soft-bodied prey like you. They then squirt digestive enzymes and suck up that nutrient soup. Isn't that great? Even though it's so big, it still eats like all its other little spider friends. <laughs> You know, when I found out these guys could get dog-sized, I was curious about something. So, I asked you in this community post. If you had to pick a dog-sized spider as a pet, what would it be and why? And here's what you chose. Nope. Can I eat it? I would have a black widow. Then I would train it to hide over the houses of my enemies. It'll sneak up from above and quickly wrap them in silk, then drag them somewhere to never be found again. I really like the amount of detail that went into this plan. Any spider, plus flamethrower. Wait, 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 that's not what I meant! Ah! Diving bell spider. I could take Spooder on fishing trips, and could also sleep over in Spooder's underwater nest, and watch whatever's going on in the lake above me. Like sleeping under the stars. Huntsman spider. They're cutie patooties. An orb weaver. Because it can make me a nice warm blanket every day. That sounds so cozy! She could even make you warm clothes, a warm scarf, wrap you up nice and tight. Blech. I would finally be able to eat spider legs! I think it would be nice and crunchy if you shave and deep fry it! <laughs> I've heard spiders taste like chicken. Can I ride it like a horse? Yes. Can I climb up walls with it? Yes. Is it big enough to ride into battle? Yes. Jumping spider. It's kinda cute, especially when wearing its water hat. Thanks for your ideas. Uh, uh, back to the video. Challenge is six. Wandering spiders. This spider is one that you definitely don't want to pick a fight with. Unluckily for you, the Brazilian wandering spider is considered the most venomous spider in the world. Even for non-bug-sized humans, a tiny dose of venom the weight of a grain of salt can be fatal if not treated in time. And wandering spiders can get huge, like seven inches huge. Okay, you can get off now. I'm uncomfortable. They're mostly found in the rainforests of South America, but there have been sightings of them in urban areas too. When threatened, they rear up into a threat pose as a warning, and charge at you to try and scare you away, even jumping up to a foot and a half. That means a spider could be like here and then... I'm uncomfortable. Also, as scary as the threat pose is supposed to be, it kinda looks like he's just asking for a hug. Aww, do you want a hug, little spider? Challenge 7. Spitting Spiders. <laughs> the spitting spider spans up to an inch long, and they have the ability to shoot webs. <laughs> the webs shoot through holes in their fangs, and they wiggle their chelicerae back and forth to create a zigzag pattern. This increases the surface area of the spray, making it harder to dodge. The silk also only gets sticky when it comes in contact with the air. If this didn't happen, then the spider would be choking on its own web spit. But because they're slow and have bad eyesight, spitting spiders usually hunt at night, when prey is less active. <sighs> they sneak up on you while you sleep, and gently prod you to gauge distance. Then the spider suddenly squeezes its body like a sauce bottle, securing you as its next meal. <sighs> Too bad none of you picked the spitting spider as a pet. You could have gotten a free squeezy bottle web shooter. Challenger 8. Bolus spiders. The bolus spider is a tiny orb weaving spider spanning under an inch long, and they have one of the most unique hunting strategies, specializing in hunting moths. No, 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 no! First, they spit out this gooey, webby snot ball and lower it down on the end of a silk line, kinda like a fisherman. The shiny goo blob smells like a female moth to your moth brain, so you're entranced, and you fly towards it expecting to find your new wife. 
but instead the spider smacks you in the face with sticky spider spit and catches you on its line. Then all the bowler spider needs to do is reel you in to a venom filled bite. Challenger 9 Purse Web Spiders Purse web spiders are dark, chunky, and have super long fangs that are way too big in relation to their bodies. They're often mistaken for tarantulas, although they only grow up to 2 inches long. But you'll get to meet these guys soon. Purse web spiders build a unique web in the shape of a tube, usually up against a tree so that it's camouflaged. The spider chills in the tube for its whole life, usually never ever coming out. When a bug-sized brain like yours sees the tube, it gets curious. Are there cookies at the top? <laughs> cookie. Before you notice your mistake, there was a cookie. The spider lunges to your position from the inside of the tube. And using its ginormous fangs, it pierces through the silk wall and straight into your guts. You're probably dead already, but you'll get a dose of venom as well, just to be sure. And then carefully, the spider cuts a small opening in the tube and pulls your corpse inside, sealing it again before it begins feeding. <laughs> Dude, you did so good getting through all that. As a reward for all your hard work, I have a gift for you. For, for me? That's right! Another 12 more unique spiders to fight right now! This was just the warm-up round. Don't forget to subscribe! <coughs> and click here to watch more spooters. Uh, also, uh, subscribe.